Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel Simply Stocks and today I'm going to talk about Century Ply Board, a complete SWOT analysis of a company that has been doing well over the last 2-3 years with its numbers and gaining market share. So let's understand about the valuations and let's get started. First of all a disclaimer that this is not a stock recommendation and people taking any position to any share that I talk about should do that with their own due diligence and research and I am not in favor or against any company that I talk about. Before I talk about Century Ply Boards, I have a small request that can you support me on Patreon. Once you do that, help me grow the channel, help you also ask me questions and eke out answers in greater detail. Once you get a $10 membership, you will have access to my portfolio, my watch list and number of podcasts I put on from time to time and also if you can pay hundred dollars upfront you get one year access by paying for 10 months so that's a 20 percent discount for detailed market or company talk you can directly email me and we can work things out with a fee and also if you cannot pay on patreon you can uh, take the monthly membership on youtube as well or you can email me and take the whatsapp membership Now about the company established in 1986, uh, Century Pie Board uh, uh, provides, it is the first ISO 9002 certified uh, plywood company and it has strong return ratios and recently raised its prices uh, twice because of the higher inflation. It has pan India presence and provides plywood solutions at home. So it's commercially available and one of the best quality plywoods uh, that it provides uh, for home furnishing. In terms of numbers, these are Q4 numbers, so sales were up 41% at around 855 crores, profits were up 41% uh, to around 94 crores and debt has reduced sharply. So currently it is virtually trading at very interesting levels at two and a half times uh, sales because the stock has fallen a lot from the top and it has fallen something like 250 rupees. Uh, from the top which is around 30 percent 30 33 percent from the top uh, ROE 10 year average of ROE of 26 percent which is increasing and margins at 18 percent is pretty stable uh, did not drop a lot probably a percentage or so uh, dropped year on year but there are companies which have lost a lot of margins over this period in terms of sort analysis, the strengths of the company, it is the market leader in the plywood division. It has high margins at around 18% is very good, uh, or you can say operating margins currently. Uh, ROA is good at beyond 25%. Sales growth over 10 years has been pretty good at around 27-28%. It grew by 40% year on year this time around. It has reduced debt over the years and now is not that you can say in debt as it were say three to four years back uh, cash reserves have annually increased at 206 crores have become 950 crores in the last 10 years it has increased by four and a half folds uh, so kept on increasing cash reserves kept on increasing uh, dividends they have variety of products sold on multiple platforms and uh, not only do they sell in their retail stores they are selling on their uh, online store as well and there are many other packages that are available to buy the products etc uh, discounts and so on and so forth uh, high promoter holding at 72 percent also gives a lot of confidence in terms of weaknesses the margin is growing at a slow rate so it is growing it is not that the operating profit margin is not growing but it is growing at a slow rate and now with high inflation and the high cost of raw material etc it seems like the margin could uh, stall around 17-18 percent or so uh, borrowings have increased over the last two three quarters that's what i'm saying seeing so there could be a situation where high interest cost will have a burden on their overall you can say expenditure on the on the overall eventual profitability that they end up making uh, not able to capture rural and third tier markets is also an issue although they are trying to get in their uh, third tier cities but they are majorly available at metros or in high-end cities across india in the rural market uh, their presence is less uh, the product mix is less so they need to increase on their product mix and the product prices overall is higher and that is probably primarily the reason why uh, the company is not able to sell big time in the rural areas because the people there are more price sensitive than in you can say the completely urban areas like mumbai etc 
in terms of opportunities if we look at that it has a big india growth story linked to it so what, what is going to happen over the next five seven years is that once india grow then these kind of products and companies will grow together and since it is a market leader it will have more you can say weight in terms of pricing power more weight in terms of increasing margins over the years with higher higher demand urbanization and, and you can say consumption increase in the third tier cities and small towns is also an opportunity which they have not grabbed at the moment but in if they can get into small towns etc this could be big uh, for the company and the sales could grow many fold a uh, global expansion is another opportunity in which they could if, if they are not able to sell in say europe and us they can definitely target uh, east asian countries and other parts of asia where they could sell uh, they are gaining more organized so more organized market share will keep on increasing that's also an opportunity that if they can gain more organized market share uh, that will have a bigger effect on the top line numbers and hopefully they'll do that they have been doing that over the last seven eight years hopefully they'll do that uh, from now on in as well benefit of tax cut as it pays around 28 30 percent tax at the moment so tax cut benefits would also trickle in uh, later on and government orders is also one thing that if they can tap into two or three big government orders uh, that could just uh, keep uh, uh, you can say that would just increase the revenue base plus there will be a set amount of uh, revenue that would be coming from government orders and these deals are normally from from 5 to 10 years perspective so that would have a completely different picture that will that will give a completely different picture to the balance sheet and, and the revenue uh, uh, for the company which is a small cap in, in all regard it's not a very large cap company it's uh, you can say slightly larger small cap in that manner in terms of threats uh, if we can see this heavy competition and there's, there's extreme competition that's why it is commendable that they are maintaining such good margins and probably they are doing that because they are the market leaders a slowdown turning into recession which it it is happening in europe and us probably it could just continue to happen uh, going forward in in countries like uh, uh india if that happens then there, there's there's big trouble for for companies like century plywood higher raw material prices is also an issue currently the raw material prices are high probably going forward if that increase uh, that would be another uh, big big issue for for the company and people opting for other products or or you can say uh, products which are more viable to them because the products are expensive for from uh, from century plywood that would be another issue going forward so they would need to rectify that if they need to get into third tier cities towns and and villages uh, probably the prices need to be curtailed but in a case in a scenario where raw material prices are such high it will be very difficult for them to do that so th these are some of the threats going forward that the growth might stall because of these so in, in 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 terms of my opinion i think the strategy could be you can buy as an sip uh, over the next one year at least for the next six to eight months you can do an sip into the stock accumulate over this period and look for massive fall so currently the stock has fallen 32 percent you can start adding probably it can definitely go 50 percent lower so the high was 750 it could definitely go to 380 uh, it's not being ruled out say if the market falls another 8 10 percent from here and if the small cap index falls another 15 percent i think this could go another 100 rupees 100 150 rupees from here on in that's around 20 25 percent so so keep uh, either keep a stop loss of what you buy so that you are not making a lot of losses even if it is long term or probably keep adding on massive declines so in my opinion this can do well over the next uh, uh, two years or so so in my opinion this can do well over the next two years or so numbers have remained ro robust in difficult times as well during the pandemic uh, numbers were decent enough they reduced debt sharply 
they have backward integration for raw material especially fuel so if you look at them i, I saw some of their interviews that the fuel cost for them is extremely less uh, because they have uh, you can say renewable energy through which they they produce their products or manufacture them uh, to a greater extent so this is a big positive for such a company and probably this is the reason why the margins are uh, uh, higher compared to other in the industries others in the industry uh, valuations have now become very attractive the stock has fallen 32 34 percent i think very easily from here the stock can go to new highs if, if things normalize altogether but it will take time so inflationary pressure may eat this quarter probably september quarter will not be that great but october onwards i see things improving on the stock front as well as on the ground uh, effect of pent-up demand is yet to kick in so what has happened is uh, after the pandemic uh, things were looking good and it looked like uh, things will pick up during the festive season but then oil prices soared and a lot of things happened so the margins got cut big time probably this time around during the festive season between october and february we'll see a lot of pent-up demand coming through because uh, most of the pandemic is behind us so hopefully from october to february the december quarter and the march quarter will be extremely good and by then the market would have also bottomed out so things should look good from october onwards and over the next couple of years i don't see any reason why this cannot go up at least 50 to 60 percent even if it goes to newer highs uh, this will be headed towards uh, you can say 750 770 which is a move of at least 50 percent from the current price and if it falls another 100 rupees then it's an even greater reward uh, for you so keep on the basic point is keep on accumulating and if you have it at higher levels do not do anything if you don't have cash then just hold on to the stock i think 750 is a reasonable target even if it goes to 400 over the next couple of years so this is my video on century plywood please like and subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so you can get my video straight away when i post it and kindly support me on patreon thanks a lot for watching